What's up, everyone? Welcome to On The Market for our first show of 2024. For today's show, to bring in the new year, we have the full panel. We have James Daynard, Henry Washington, and Kathy Fecky joining us today. And we thought it would be fun to kick off the new year to get in line with what's going on culturally, which, of course, if you're listening today, the day it came out, is the college football playoffs. So today we're going to be looking at the towns for each team in the college football playoffs. We'll talk about the dynamics of each market and which one is the best place to invest in 2024. Do any of you, James, do you watch college football? Are you a fan? I, I'm a huge Huskies football fan. That's where I went to. Uh, that's where I went to school. All right. So you have a vested interest in this debate today because the University of Washington is one of the teams that we're going to be talking about. And James gets to really hone in on a sweet spot and talk about Seattle. Henry, are you a college football fan at all? No, I'd say in the past, I watched a lot more of it, but lately, not so much. Um, I will watch the occasional Arkansas game just because if you live here, you can't not, um, which is uh, uh, I may get booed and shunned if I'm talking about Alabama today. So <laughs> hopefully I'll still be accepted in my market. Yeah, You might not want to admit that publicly. <laughs> All right. What about you, Kathy? Is this, uh, are you going to be speaking from personal experience and knowledge here? Or are you uh, going to be as lost as I am? Well, I was a college football fan when I was a cheerleader in college many, many years ago for a very oh, not you, great. Co <laughs> you were a professional college football fan then. That was like a formal <laughs> role for you. I went to a tiny college in Spokane, Washington. So no, it doesn't count. But and then I was also a fan when my daughter went to San Diego State. So there were some good tailgate parties there. But otherwise, you know, no. All right. Well, if I'm giving it away, I really know nothing about college football. But <laughs> Dave, are you the go sports, do the thing with the points kind of guy? No, I, I actually am a sports fan. I, I follow the NFL. I actually I'm like the one remaining MLB fan in the entire country. Um, so I like <laughs> sports, but I just I went to a D3 school and never really got into uh, college sports. Also, growing up in New York, there's a ton of professional sports teams, but there's not a lot of good college sports in the New York City area. So it was just easier to be a professional sports fan. So I'm just kind of lost when it comes to to college sports. But I think I'm pretty good at evaluating real estate markets. So at least I have some experience and credibility in this conversation. <laughs> All right, so let's kick this off. Each one of us is going to represent one of the four teams in the college football playoffs. James is the luckiest, obviously, and he is going to be representing the University of <laughs> Washington. Kathy is going to be representing the University of Texas at Austin. Henry will be taking the University of Alabama, and I will be taking the University of Michigan. So let's start with James because he gets the easy layup, and we'll just let him uh, roll off some stats and talk about his own backyard first. So James, why? Tell, first, tell us a little bit about the Huskies. You know, are they what? What do we got to look for in the in the games today about the Huskies? And then tell us a little bit about Seattle as an investing market. Well, not only is Seattle the best investing market, the Huskies are the best team this year. They are the number two ranked 13 and 0. And this is the final year of the Pac-12, which is kind of sad to me because I grew up watching Pac-10, Pac-12 football, and now it just got obliterated, and this is its last year. So we're hoping we win the final championship game, and they are going to smash Texas on Jan 1, and I do plan on going to the championship game in Texas, so I'm excited to go. James, tell me, tell, do you have a ritual for watching the game? Like, it, this episode comes out on the 1st. We're obviously recording it beforehand, but you will be watching the game while everyone is listening to this. What what do you do to uh, support your Huskies? Well, I mean, as soon as you put your underwear on, you got to put your gear on, too. So it's it, it's hats and jerseys right away. <laughs> I will say my Seahawk... <laughs> I will say my Seahawk rituals are a lot more aggressive uh but it's you know it's it, you just got to rep them and so we'll be i'm actually going to be in australia randomly but i will be repping the w throughout all on all continents all right well th that's an image for everyone to uh think about during, <laughs> during the game today james but why don't you tell us about Seattle as a market? Obviously, this is your backyard where you have built your entire career. So tell us a little bit about what 
why Seattle is such a great market for you and what strategies people listening to this might want to consider. Yeah, I mean, Seattle, not only the Huskies, the best team, Seattle's probably the best market that I know to invest in. And I know that that go, you know, I hear a lot. They're like, oh, it's expensive. The landlord uh, laws can be tough. And those are all true things. But it is an amazing city uh, to invest in in general. Uh, to give you quite a, a quick background of uh, what it is, there's over 4 million people and the unemployment rate is 3.9%. What makes Seattle so good to invest in is the median income is 97000 And in the tech space, it's more like I think around 120000 And we have a lot of condensed very well paid, very well employed workers, and the median home price is only at six ninety nine seven fifty. So for the income that's being brought in, it's actually somewhat affordable. Um, but the reason it's such a great market, we have built an amazing portfolio, and we can cash flow it at ten to eleven percent cash on cash returns every year. We do this, and the reason that it's, it's such a great market to invest in, it's a heavy value add because what we have is we have a booming city where the tech is expanding. The reason the tech is expanding is because we have no income tax in our state. And as these tech companies in San Francisco have to start competing with Amazon, right? Our two big anchors are Microsoft and Amazon, our big tech hubs. What's happened is Google, Apple, um, and everybody else has had to come to our city because they can't compete with the wages. Because anytime you're making over 13% more than California, people's quality of life automatically goes up. So it's a booming city, and we've seen a lot of growth, and the growth is going to continue. The tech expansion throughout the market is massive. Microsoft is building a 10-year campus build-out. Apple's investing in their campuses. Google's expanding their campuses. There's That tech money is real money that's coming in and building infrastructure. But not only can you make high cash-on-cash cash returns if you are into value-add, we also make an average of 35 to 40% on our uh, flip properties and dev deals. So it's a high, high return business. Well, James, one thing I can agree with you on is I also wore Husky underwear, but that's because it was the Fat Kid brand, and that's what I wore when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, other, other than that, I think what you meant to say was that Seattle is a great investment market for people who already have money. I mean, the prices are expensive, and that means you're going to have to put a down payment down, and 20% of uh, $200,000 in the Midwest somewhere is a whole lot easier than 20% of $550,000 for a fixer-upper. So I think you have to get pretty creative, if you're a new investor who doesn't have a lot of money, to be able to jump into a market like Seattle and take advantage. I agree, the margins you have... Man, I get jealous when I see your profits and your proceeds on a flip because you'll make on one flip what takes me like four or five to make. But uh, it seems a little riskier as well. So I, eh, Seattle, Seattle scares me. Yeah, I agree. I mean, uh, Seattle's a great place to invest. You know, twenty years ago, uh, I, I wouldn't invest there unless I were James Daynard and really knew how to do it, or if there were. Uh, you know, little pockets outside that are growing or yet to be discovered, perhaps that could work. Uh, but the people I know, Tarl Yarber, for example, he's not, you know, he's not doing the buy and hold. And I'm a buy and hold investor. So I don't think it would work for me. James, what do you say to that? Do you think regular people can jump in? Regular people can jump in. We work with clients all day long that are regular. Uh, it works for any type of price point. Just because Seattle, certain pockets of Seattle are expensive, that is for sure. But there's also very affordable pockets too. You can flip a house and buy it for three hundred fifty thousand, sell it for four ninety nine. You can buy rental properties in the three hundred fifty thousand, and they just need a little bit more work. The beautiful thing is about being an expensive market, though, or more expensive market with the big equity positions, it allows you to leverage more. So you don't need as even though the pricing's bigger, you can get deeper discounts with bigger equity positions, and so you can stack your leverage if you want. And as an investor. It's about figuring out that market. Like the first deal I ever did, I had to take 100% financing on and pay for it, but it gave me so much equity. It gave me the gunpowder. I could start rolling it from there. So that first deal can give you that cash to grow very quickly. 
You heard it here, folks. James Daynard is going to give you the cash for your first deal in Seattle, Washington <laughs> to, to get you started. And <laughs> hey, remember what I said. I paid a lot of money for that money. So it just uh, <laughs> be wary of the rates. All right, James, you've done a decent job defending yourself. But I think all of James's problems, J- James's uh, opinions are uh, a little biased, given that he's only ever invested in Seattle. So let's uh, let's go to a different part of the country, one that has been been really in the center of a lot of news over the last couple of years. Kathy, uh, you've got the University of Texas at Austin, Texas. Tell us a little bit about the team. I'd love to hear your your recounting of what the team is like. And then tell us about the market. Well, uh, listen, if I were 17 years old, I would definitely consider going here. Uh, The team is the Longhorns, of course, record 12 to 1 win probability of college football playoffs, 25%. James James is shaking his head. (laughs) (laughs) James says no chance. Austin is cool. Austin is weird. It's a, that's what they say. Uh, It's a great place to invest for the long term. It's been the darling of real estate investors for years. And right now it's a buyer's market. Uh, and it, it, Realtor.com just came out and forecast that for 2024, actually prices will, their forecasting will continue to decline. They said 12%. So is it a good time to buy right now? Well, if you can get a great discount better than 12%, <laughs> probably. Uh, but I think Austin will be a great place to get to know and understand because prices appear to be coming down. They have um, in, in the city and in the Red Rock area come down about 10%. As I understand it, some markets probably even more. So this is an this is a city that is growing. It's the new Seattle. Sorry, James, but you've got Google, Tesla, Amazon, <laughs> Apple. You've got SpaceX, Meta expanding billions and billions of dollars coming in there. Just Elon Musk alone with Tesla is bringing in 10,000 jobs. And if you heard him on his on a recent podcast, he says that's that brings in, you know, 6x that or whatever, because then there's all the services needed. So Austin's not slowing down in growth. It's just that prices went up so dramatically over the last few years that it's tapering off, coming down. And that to me says there could be a buying opportunity in 2024. Um, and it would be a good time to really get to know the neighborhoods. Now, if you're going to go and move there um, and hold, great. You know, especially if you can get a duplex or a fourplex, rent those other units out and uh, and and hold it for the long term. I do believe that Austin, you know, right now the median home price is four hundred and fifty nine thousand dollars. Compare that to Seattle, which was six hundred and ninety nine thousand. I, I really believe Austin is the new Seattle again. Sorry, um, but you know I think there's room for growth, just not next year, not not in twenty twenty four. But when prices are down, it's a buyer's market. You want to buy in a buyer's market. So many times people get this confused and and want to buy in a seller's market when everybody's buying and the seller has the power. Right now, you have the power. So I would keep an eye on Austin. You're still not going to, you know, cash flow as well as some of the other cities that that are, you know, that are also growing in Texas. That's why we focus on Dallas where the median home price is lower. We're looking at San Antonio. Um, the market, that, that whole area between San Antonio and Austin is going to be like one metro area like San Jose and San Francisco, where that just all grew in. I think that's going to happen there between San, uh, uh, San Antonio and Austin. So lots of opportunity if you buy right and can hold it, maybe good for flipping in, in a, if, if, if you know the market well, and not, not maybe this year, but in the years to come. Poor, poor Kathy. We're giving her the number one biggest correction market in the entire country to try and defend right now. And you're doing a very admirable job of it. I will give you that. But I'm just joking because there is this kind of weird dynamic right now where with many of the markets that are seeing the biggest corrections also have some of the long term best fundamentals, like the best population growth, the best uh, economic growth, the best job growth. So it is it is actually an opportunity. I'm just kind of teasing you. But I, I do think uh, <laughs> it's one of those markets that you have to be pretty 
careful with. Yes. Kathy, if you were moving to this market, you said flipping, are there any other strategies you think people would should consider? If you're in California and you're moving to Austin, it's still super cheap. So, you know, I see people doing that and I have friends doing that. And, um, you know, they're buying homes that they can fix up and they're going to live in for a while. And I think they're going to do really well, especially if you're buying in some of these areas where all that growth is happening, uh, which is kind of everywhere, honestly. Uh, so yeah, if you're looking to live there, I, I think you're going to do well over the long term. If you're looking to, uh, you know, buy, a, you know, build something potentially, Honestly, I wouldn't do it in 2024. I would do towards the end because like I said, um, you know, realtor.com came out with their 2024 housing forecast. And it's not looking good for for Austin in terms of prices. Like there it looks like it's still coming down. But we also saw mortgage rates come down, so who knows? Who knows? You got to know it's it's just like James said, you know, he's making it work in Seattle. If James can make it work in Seattle, and you know Austin well enough. I tell you right now, there's listeners, and I'd love to hear it in the comments. I want to hear from you guys. There's listeners who are making a ton of money in Austin. They just know it well enough to be able to make that work. I agree. I think it's a different investment mindset with a market like Austin because what Austin's going to be good for is like real wealth accumulation. If you can get in now and negotiate a really good deal because of the rates are high and there's not a lot of competition, like people who are selling now need to sell or else why else would they be doing it? And so if you could get in, find yourself something now and uh, maybe it doesn't make you a ton of money over the next one to three years, maybe it doesn't make you much at all. But if it's going to increase in value. By fifty, seventy, a hundred thousand dollars over the next five years, because as rates drop and demand goes up, like people want to live in Austin because it's cool and it's fun and there's huge amenities and it for for all that cool and fun, you get it at a more affordable price than living in a coastal city. And so, like, there's any place that's got a reputation like that, people are going to want to move to and they're going to want to own homes. And so if you've bought some of these properties now, when you can get in at a good price and capture that appreciation, like real wealth is built through appreciation and uh, and um, through appreciation and debt pay down over time. So um, it's more of a long term play. It's not really like a, you're not going to get, you know, month over month phenomenal cash flow in that market unless you are an, a market expert and know where exactly what pockets you can go do that in. So it's just a different strategy, but that doesn't mean you can't make money there. All right. So James, has has Kathy convinced you that Austin is the new Seattle and are you going <laughs> to uh, pick up shop and start flipping homes in Austin? Hey, I do like Austin. And, and part of the reason I like Austin too is it's it was a little bit more of a bubbly market, and so there it, it's getting more overcorrection. So I do think that the market's in a little bit of a panic still there. So you can get some good buys when the market's scared. There is some good buys there. I, I agree with Kathy on that. But that's the reason why Seattle is actually better than Austin. It's less bubbly. It is a less. <laughs> co- I will be honest. It's a less cooler place to it, place to live. And so, like during the pandemic, we they didn't, they saw way more surge in population than Seattle saw because it was a cool, swanky place to live. And and I get it. Austin is a really cool city. I like going there. I would invest there. But Seattle's a lot more stable. We didn't get the surge because Seattle's just a little bit rainier. It doesn't have that same coolness of it. But the stability is why I like Seattle a lot better than Austin. And speaking of which, though, on the football, how did Texas be 12-1 and one and they are favored to win? That Everyone's always hedging against Seattle. <laughs> they gave us a 12.5% chance, and they have a 24 – Texas has a 24% chance. I, this is – we're going to see how this goes. But I guarantee you that the Huskies will win. And I also guarantee you that Seattle will make you more money. Are you going to guarantee it with your own money, James? If someone loses money, you'll reimburse them. You know, actually, I don't want to ever guarantee a return. So (laughs) (laughs) come find us and we'll help you out through the the process. The SEC has entered the chat. Yes. (laughs) That is not a guarantee. We'll we'll add a disclaimer at the end of the show. Stability is key. And Seattle has proven over the last 18 months it's a much more stable market. All right. Well, Kathy, thank you for bringing that information for us. So so far, James has represented Seattle and his hometown favorite and his alma mater, the Huskies. 
Kathy represented the University of Texas in the Longhorns. Now, Henry, we're moving to your neck of the woods with the University of Alabama. Tell us about the Crimson Tide and Tuscaloosa. Alabama. Uh, yeah, man, this is, you know, this is <laughs> this is right in my weird. I, I live in essentially a market that's almost, that's that's pretty similar to, to Alabama being, you know, Fayetteville, Arkansas. Uh, you know, mostly a college town, but what's cool about Alabama is there's a lot more market dynamics than just the college. When you look at the economy in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, not only do you have the University of Alabama there pro- providing tons and tons of jobs, but you've also got the uh, healthcare system in Alabama and uh, Mercedes has a manufacturing plant where they manufacture a lot of the SUVs for Mercedes in Alabama. So there's lots of jobs to go around. You've got a fairly affordable median home price of just over two hundred thousand dollars. But what's cool is you got a median rent of six hundred dollars, six sixteen hundred dollars. So that's a pretty good rent to purchase ratio, and it's got some of the lowest. Uh, it's got lower vacancy rates than the national average. I'm sure a lot of that has to do with college or student housing. But when you couple uh, the average salary, well, the average salary is just under 55,000 a year. So when you couple an average salary on top of good jobs, population growth, that's growing year over year with a pretty decent median rent price and a pretty low average home price, it's a great place where you can actually buy properties that, you know, not only are going to cash flow, but they're going to stay rented with lower vacancy rates, meaning, and with lower vacancy rates, that just means there's less competition. If something's on the market for rent, it's typically going to get rented. And so you're able to know that I'm going to have tenants consistently that are going to pay a good rent that's going to cover my mortgage plus my expenses. I'm going to have great pe- people with great jobs in more than just one industry. And so, yes, it is not a sexy place like, um, like, <clears throat> excuse me. Yes, it is not a sexy place like Seattle or Austin, but there are still plenty of fun things to do. It's a college town. Trust me, I've been to an Alabama football game. Them people are not short of having a good time out there. There's, <laughs> pl- there's plenty of good times to be had out in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. So uh, I think it's a great place to invest your money. It's got great fundamentals and market dynamics. Yeah, that sounds like my kind of market. Look at that. Median home price, 208000 Median rent, 1600 Those numbers work. Especially if you got student housing and could rent per the room. I I haven't done that, but boy, I bet it could be lucrative. So I'm a thumbs up. I like this one because it's actually a college town. Like, obviously, there's giant universities in in Washington and Seattle and in Austin, but... I, I've never been to Tuscaloosa, but we did another show where we were representing markets and I did some research into Tuscaloosa and it does really feel like sort of the engine of that city. Uh, Henry mentioned there's, ma- you know, car manufacturing. There are other industries, but it does really seem centered around the town and that there's like a lot of attractions around the university. They're building arts uh, facilities there. And given the spirit of the show, talking about what the best college town is, I do like the idea of um, a place that is really sort of fueled um by by the university itself. Henry, tell us a little bit more about the game. How much fun did you have? <laughs> well, I mean, it was a good time had by all. <laughs> we did some partying before the game and then we went to the game and um I don't know if you know much about Alabama as a football team and Arkansas as a football team. But we don't really do well <laughs> when we play them. So we weren't at we weren't at the game the whole time because we were having more fun at the places we were at prior to the game. So we we hung around, <laughs> we cheered. The game was over by halftime, and we went back out and uh, and drowned our sorrows. <laughs> That sounds about right. Well, I'm glad you at least enjoyed yourself. All right. Well, so now we've gone through Seattle, Austin, and Tuscaloosa, Alabama. So we've sort of had two more expensive markets, but great, strong fundamentals, a lot of economic growth. Uh, Then Henry brought us Tuscaloosa, which is more of a college town, a big you know city. It's almost got two hundred and seventy eight thousand people, so big city, um, but a much more affordable city. 
And the last market that we're going to be talking about today, I will be bringing you, which is Ann Arbor, Michigan, and the University of Michigan with the Wolverines. And I got to tell you guys, I am very excited that Kaylin, our producer, assigned me the University of Michigan because I have been to a grand total of one college football game in my entire life. And well, I went to some D3 games at my college, but a D1 college game, and it was at the University of Michigan. I was a sophomore in college, and I drove to see some friends. And using Henry's evaluation technique of how much fun you had at the party, I'm convinced that Ann Arbor is the single best real estate market in the entire (laughs) country because we had a very good time at that college football game. (laughs) But really, Ann Arbor is actually a very interesting market, sort of similar to Tuscaloosa. It's really centered around the university, but has a pretty big population. It's 366,000. And it's actually one of the biggest universities in the entire uh, country and has pretty good fundamentals. So it's a high income place. The median income is nearly 80,000, but the median home price is only 381,000. So if you compare that to just absolute garbage markets like Seattle, where their median income is higher, it's yeah, 97,000, but their median home price is 700,000. So the rent to price ratio in Michigan is a lot better. It's actually growing this year. We've had price growth of 3%, which is better than, certainly better than Austin, which is just crashing right now. And we also have a solid rent growth. So from where I'm sitting, not only is the University of Michigan the best investing town, but it also is the favorite to win the college football playoffs with a 38.5% chance of winning. So I'm feeling pretty good about Ann Arbor right now. Michigan is my second favorite college football team, and I, I will rep them. <laughs> One of my most cherished items I have in my house is a signed national championship hat by Charles Woodson. And so I do rep the blue, but as far as investing goes... I think the big point that Henry and Dave are missing on their affordable markets, I get it. They're really good for cash flow. Um, There's great rental metrics. You can do well on cash flow if that is your plan and goal. But even if you're getting your cash flow and you're making $500 a month on a a unit, on a single family house, that's great cash flow. That's six grand for the year. On one deal in Seattle, I can create a $100,000 equity position once I'm done renovating it. It's going to take 18 years for both of your markets to catch up after 12 months with the equity position we're going to gain. And that's why I like Seattle over Ann Arbor and over Alabama. Uh, it's it, You can get those huge, you can get 20 years of cash flow in nine months by just strategically adding value to that building. Yeah, I would agree with that. Get the juice. You're, you're not, <laughs> you're, you know, they're, they're just two different worlds, right? If, if you're trying to grow wealth, you're just, you're not going to do it in markets that don't grow in equity. You're, but you will get cash flow. So it just depends on where you are. If you are wanting cash flow now, and some people do, some people have already made their equity. They, they want to invest it and just live off the cash flow. And if that's you, that, that could work. Or if you just don't have a lot of money. You know, a $200,000 property is going to be a little easier to get into than, you know, a higher priced one. So again, it just depends on where you are in life. But if you're trying to make equity, you know, be in equity markets, not in cash flow markets. Dave, I'm not going to argue too much with you here about Michigan. I think Michigan as a state in general is a pretty slept on real estate market that has great fundamentals outside of even Ann Arbor. It's a place where you can really, really get some cash flow. And then in markets like Ann Arbor and some of the other more popular areas in Michigan, you can get cash flow and appreciation. Um, and, and, and a lot of people just don't think about Michigan as a state to invest in because it just seems to be one of those states people forget that's a state. But it's all, it's also like you've got it's the weather. I think people see it as this cold weather place and they don't want to live there. And so they don't think about it from an investment standpoint, but it's um, Michigan in general, I think is, is super slept on great, great market fundamentals. Um, 
if I didn't have such a good real estate market, I would be looking at markets like uh, like Michigan and Ohio, these cold weather states that have great dynamics. Well, thank you, Henry, for supporting me. I really appreciate that. <laughs> Now that we have the information for all four college markets, I want us all to vote. I know we are representing the the city that we were assigned, but I'd like your honest opinion. We all know what James is going to say. He's going to say (laughs) Seattle, but let's just give him the opportunity to say the obvious. James, go ahead. Go Huskies. Seattle. I, I know what I know, and I've lived what I've lived, and I can tell you, it makes huge impacts to be in this the, this major metro city. All right, so we've got one vote for Seattle. Kathy, are you sticking with Austin, or where would you vote? I, I really am. You know, I, I this is one place I might even be okay with negative cash flow. Not really, but um, th- this Austin is booming, and it's it's the real estate prices aren't right now, but they will. They will over time. So if I had to choose between the four, it would be Austin. If I didn't, I'd be right outside of Austin and um, maybe some of the other Texas cities. All right. Wow. Two homers so far. Henry, what do you got? I'm going to give two answers. And neither one of them is the market that I represented. So if I was thinking now in, in my current investment journey, where I've already built a portfolio, I have income coming in from not just real estate, but other parts of businesses that I own. It's not just about cash flow anymore for me. It's more about true wealth creation, equity, appreciation, and uh, tax benefits. And so I would look at Austin and get in and start buying really good deals, even if they negatively cash out for me. Like if I got to feed a deal $100 a month, but that deal is going to increase in value by twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars a year, and that deal is going to offset my tax bill by forty to fifty thousand dollars a year. That's, I mean, I'm going to get way better appreciation there than I am in in my current market. And so, if I had to choose one of the four as an investor, that the place that I'm at right now, I'm going to look at Austin. If I was a new investor and I was getting in the game and wanted to get my feet wet, wanted to get some cash flow, wanted to to be more affordable, less risky, I'm probably going to look at the Michigan market. I just think the fundamentals are great with the population, the economy, the uh, average rents. And the uh, entry price for the homes, I think you're going to get a little bit of you get a little bit of everything, a little cash flow, a little appreciation. It's not a ton of risk, um, much safer play. All right. Well, I'm voting for my own, which is uh, Michigan. And this is actually genuine as well because of what Henry just said, like the way I, where I am in my investing career, I do still want to get appreciation, but I'm looking for at least modest break even cash flow so that I don't have to feed any money into it ideally. And so when I'm looking at Michigan, I really like that. I really like that. Uh, I like Alabama too, because I like those cities that they're really um, have consistent demand due to the college uh, atmosphere. You're always going to have professors. You're always going to have students. There's always going to be a little bit of uh, tourism, people coming into these types of places. So I really like that. So I don't really know where this puts us because Henry voted twice. No, Henry said Austin first. Austin wins. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're just more convincing than I am, Kathy. So we're going to let Austin win. I think that's a good market. <laughs> you're a smart man, Dave. You know, good for Austin. It also has excellent food, and I like hanging out in Austin. So I'm willing yeah. to uh, I'm willing to give it to you. All right. Well, I'm curious to see what actually unfolds today. Or if you listen to this after the day of recording, you'll already know what's going to happen. But hopefully this information helps you understand these four particular markets. But I think more importantly, we do these types of shows to help you understand how to think about different markets. There, Most markets in the United States can make money for investors really in any type of conditions. Just look at James, right? He is investing in a very expensive market and doing it very, very well. You look at other people who are investing in less expensive markets like Tuscaloosa and are probably also doing really well given their personal situation. And so we hope that these types of shows help you understand where you are and trying to align the right types of markets, the right types of strategies for where you are in your investing career. If you like this show, please share it with a friend or give us a good review on either Spotify or Apple. Thank you all so much for listening, and we'll see you for the next episode of On The Market. On The Market was created by me, Dave Meyer, and Kaylin Bennett. 
The show is produced by Kalen Bennett with editing by Exodus Media. Copywriting is by Calico Content, and we want to extend a big thank you to everyone at Bigger Pockets for making this show possible.